Yes, northern Spain, temperatures in the mid-60s. It's a perfect day to launch this third big race of the season for the tour men. And I'll tell you what, it's going to be a highly competitive one. Hello again, everybody. Welcome back. Here's the old team again. I'm Phil Liggett, joined by Paul Sherwin and by Bob Roll. We're all looking very much forward now uh, to this final big race of the season. Stage race, that is. Paul, take us through. Well, it's the shortest of all the three Grand Tours and certainly going to be a very interesting route, starting with a team time trial around Gijon and then moving down the Bay of Biscay towards Santander and then turning inland for the first time to the famous cycling town of Burgos. A short transfer down to Soria and down to then Zaragoza for, of course, a very interesting first individual time trial before the race then heads up towards the Pyrenees, a mountain top finish at Cotteret and then, of course, at the Pla de Beret before the riders then head into Andorra. A very first, typical first 10 days of racing before the riders get down to the Mediterranean. A long transfer down to the southern part of the Iberic Peninsula as we go down to Albacete, where on stage 13 the riders have their second individual time trial. They then head inland for a succession of two very difficult mountain top finishes. I think the most difficult of all will be the summit of Sierra Nevada. Riding away from Granada on stage 17, where they head back up towards the north and Cordoba. And then the Tour of Spain finishes for the last few days right around Madrid, but a very difficult uphill mountain top time trial on stage 20. Yes, that's something of an innovation. Thanks, Paul. 21 stages, two rest days, making a total of 23 days. 22 teams, a total of 198 riders. We reckon eight of these stages will suit the sprinters. Nine are for the mountain boys. Two individual time trials and a mountain time trial. And if you want to see all the mountains, there they are. 11 first category, five outside category, and five second category climbs. Well, we can now go to the action on today's stage. It's the team time trial. As the Anse team now come to the final kilometre of the team time trial, the opening day of the Vuelta Espana. A massive crowd here in this coastal town of Gijón. And it's going to be the best time, and it should be the winning time. As they now make their way down, just look at this crowd, Paul. This is a marvellous finish, the team. There's the tie to beat. The first team off, the first team off, 32-25, Ivan Esto. And now Anse are going to absolutely annihilate that time. I think the important thing here is not the speed of these guys, but the fact that they've all worked very well together. They've lost two men out on the course. The time they have to beat, there is the time of Ibanesto.com, 32.25. But these guys have gone faster than anybody else, and you can see Gonzalez de Galdiano there at the moment in third place, trying to move himself up into first. They want him to be the first yellow jersey of this year's Vuelta a España. Well, if he does, he'll do what Joshiba Bolocchi did last year and take the race lead for Anse on day one. As there's no doubt the first man from this squad to cross the line is going to be the first golden jersey of the Giro d'Italia. But this doesn't look to me like Galdiano who's going to take it, or is he going to move over? Because there they are, they've moved over for him. Onse have produced a magic time, almost a, a 32 minute flat ride at 32.01. Here comes the big sprint up to the line now, but don't overdo it too much because the rest are right there. Looks like George Incapi is steering them through at the front. There's the time, 32. 201 as the riders now having made a big effort come off the back of the group the fifth right this is George now the fifth man is where the clock will stop and it's going to be in second place for Postal they look as though they may have closed the gap they were 16 seconds down they're a little bit closer than that but it hasn't been quite good enough the recovery as they come up they lose by just 10 seconds so they pull back six but they finish in second place but 10 seconds is absolutely nothing as they go out on the highway tomorrow well, nine of them on the podium, two of them, of course, work with the team when they crossed the line. At Pradera and Jörg Jatska both dropped and lost over four minutes uh, to the second team on the board. But nonetheless, they share in the honours here, and it's Igor Gonzalez de Galdiano, all smiles on the far right, who will pull on the leader's jersey. It's all worked out for them, Paul. It certainly has. This team has spent an awful lot of time and money over the last few years, just specially preparing for this kind of discipline. And at the end of the day, it just goes to show that it pays off. Off. They're putting their man Igor Gonzalez de Galdiano into the lead just as they did last year with Yoshiba Belocchi. But there's an awful long way, Phil, before this bike race gets back up to Madrid. 
Bob, we'll be surprised, I think, to hear that uh, Ivan Caranta of Saeco, who was dropped early on, has abandoned the tour already. I can't remember that happening for many years. And in the Relax When Labrada team, by the way, three riders who crashed, and we never saw that on television, Santiago Blanco, Jose Meister, Nico Burgos, uh, apparently finished, but have all gone to hospital and may not start tomorrow. Well, Ivan Caranta has totally lost the plot of international cycling. He's not a climber, he's a field sprinter. But to be put out of the race just after the first time it pointed up, absolute disaster for Saeco and Ivan Caranta. All right, well, as we see the Anse boys saluting what is quite a large crowd here in Gijón, we can have a look at how the results has worked out today. The first two are the same as one year ago. Kelme, who finished third last year, dropped to fourth. Bernesto, who finished seventh last year, really improved up to third. And the quick step, the Vitamon team from Belgium, losing just 48 seconds. And remember that Frank Vandenbroek, uh, we never know what quite what he's going to do when he comes to a bike race, has really got himself in a good mental frame of mind for this year's event. And I think we can expect to see something of him, perhaps when the racing gets out on the highways tomorrow. Well, this man will collect all of the leaders' jerseys. It usually happens on the opening day, especially in a team time trial. This is the one that he will wear tomorrow, of course. It's the golden jersey as the first leader of this year's Vuelta España. Last year, it was his teammate, uh, Joshiba Balocchi, who pulled it on after winning the team time trial. They almost made a mistake, I felt, because he just about managed the first place crossing of the line when his front man did slow down. I think he misjudged it just a little bit. It was an awful long way from that final bend in the road towards the finishing line and I think he felt he had the power to lead out for the last 500 meters rather a strange mistake Bob but that I think indicates that maybe he's not quite yet at the top of his form in this three-week bike race well he did an absolutely fabulous effort out there on the roads he led the team through a lot of the time checks he was doing a good job and he's been well rewarded here with the first golden jersey of the bike race And welcome back to the second day of coverage of the Tour of Spain. The riders going 148 kilometers a day from Guillon to Cangas de Onis. Well, let's have a look at the route that they are facing now. As I say, it's not a flat one. We say goodbye to the coast, albeit only briefly, and race inland today. And that's where the hills are waiting for the riders. And I can tell you they're already showing signs of cracking under the strain out on the course today. It's a 148 kilometer stage. Let's have a look at the hills. Here they are. We climb Madeira, Fire and Mirador. Mirador is a first category climb. And the last time we finished in Cangas, Enrique Chima was the winner then. And that was 25 years ago, back in 1978. Let's get to the action then, because as I say, things are happening. Two riders are out of the tour already. Not finishing the team time trial is Ivan Caranta. And not starting the road race today, Mario Cipollini. Well, it's getting themselves organized here. You can see almost or feel almost the urgency in the pedaling action of these riders. Perez on the front there looks very strong indeed, as you can see at the back there in second position. I think Carlos Sastra is taking a few risks to try and get himself a little bit of shelter from the wind. This will be three kilometers to go right now. The clock will start again, and if it's still 35 seconds, well, these two riders don't have all that much to worry about because there's nobody really got the pressure on the front end of the main field to bring it all back together. And then it's up to Bob Roll to keep an eye on who finishes best of the Onse boys to tell me who the next leader of the team is. Absolutely. I think that they'll let Igor Gonzalez Galeano go ahead of, the, uh, of, the, of his teammates to keep the jersey. We thought that Angel Vicioso, who looked to be still in the front group with about five k's of climbing to go, might get the jersey. But then all hell broke loose in the peloton. The gap came down a little bit there. They lost three seconds, Ooh. but I think they're going to have enough cushion all the way to the finish. De Galdiano's keeping the jersey. Luis Perez is winning the stage. Carlos Sastra is getting some time on GC. That's my prediction. <laughs> all right. Well, we've got the two leaders, and uh, Sastra's looking for the stage win. He's had one stage win in the Tour de France this year. Stage number 13. Striking a little bit earlier in the Tour of Spain, stage number two today. And it's been a tough opening road race stage for the riders in the Tour. Some big surprises out on the highway. A lot of riders found lacking here on the hills of the Asturias. Remember, in the wettest area of, uh, of Spain here, the race entirely through the Asturias today. Uh, but the rain, thankfully, has kept off. But the countryside certainly looks a bit green. Two kilometres to go right now. And just quickly to refresh ourselves of what the finish is like. In fact, with about 500 metres to go, there's a very difficult right-hand bend, followed by an, another corner with 250 metres to go into the finishing line. 
And uh, fortunately today, it is not going to be a bunch sprint because if it had been, I think it would have been a rather tricky run in towards the finish. There's the group now coming up to two kilometers to go and still they're holding on to that half a minute advantage, the two leaders, so it should go to either of them. And uh, neither of them great winners. It's always very difficult when you're in a two-man situation after a long effort like that to see just exactly who is going to get themselves the win. Five seconds in two kilometres, that's not enough to bring back the two leaders, uh, but it is keeping the race lead firmly in the Onse camp, and that's all Onse are doing now. They've turned off the chase. They feel as though they've got this race basically under control, although these two riders, of course, are coming into play on the days that lie ahead, and Sastra is a good mountain climber. We know that. So too is Perez, not quite at the level as perhaps as Sastra, uh, but riders who could challenge over the next couple of days for that leader's golden jersey out of the hunt today by a long way Levi Leipheimer certainly and others we will look for we believe Gonzalez is behind as well he was chasing down the mountain dropped on the climb at one kilometer to go to the finish well one kilometer to go they'll be looking for a left hand bend in a short while followed by a right hander and now's the moment when they're starting to think about how they're going to handle the sprint you can see in second position here Carlos Sastra is not a powerful bike rider and just looking at the the body there Bob on Luis Perez he looks a much more powerful rider a lot bigger thighs a lot stronger but it's all a question of tactics when it comes down to a sprint like this it's difficult because these two men have been putting a lot of effort into the success of the breakaway for the last 15 kilometers yes absolutely Sastra on the front now just trying to keep the tempo up so he gets as much time as possible Luis Perez has took taken the second position there he'll watch Sasha who'll be able to gauge his effort here is the last corner with just a few hundred meters to go so Sastra has the lead now and Perez is in a perfect position here now Sastra has had a good win this year in the Tour de France he finished sixth in the Tour de Romandie but you always want to win he's opening up the sprint now now Perez I think with a look over his shoulder has conceded here or is he going to kick again because if he can get the win this will be without doubt his finest win as well he's not going to go for it San oh yes he is here he comes and uh, on the line oh not quite the wrong line sorry as now Perez is going to take the stage win it will be his second win of the year he won a stage of the Tour de Navarra it's his second win ever in the Vuelta Espana I'm not surprised he's all smiled at 29 years of age and boy did they close that gap down on the running as well as uh, Scarponi I think it is who comes up on the left there and Heras is just in there the points leader and in fact we're going to have the other be Jacqueline Rodriguez in that points jersey Bob who will be the new leader of the tour well, we'll have to see what the point situation is we won't know till they give the jersey out but that's a very strange situation maybe he mm. didn't wasn't uh, totally uh, familiar with how the situation was going to go it might be the first three riders Luis Perez however doing a great little sprint there no problem at all getting the better of Carlos Sasser in the sprint he looked to be the stronger and Sasser though gained some time on the field let to see exactly what the time gap is it was about 20 25 seconds by the finish he certainly put in a strong burst up to the line here I think these two riders the most important thing for them was to pull back as much time as possible but this man Luis Perez had the power when it came up to the acceleration for him to get that win now let's have a look at the stage results Perez getting the victory ahead of Carlos Sastra in the sprint Alejandro Valverde of Kelme getting home in third place Martin Perdiguero of Domina Vacanzi happy to be in the tour no doubt taking fourth and Jacqueline Rodriguez significantly there in fifth place first of the Onse riders and that should be enough to give him the golden jersey David Echebria did well to hang on and finish in sixth after his breakaway Sinkovic Igor Astalo of Seiko Dario Frigo there and Gorka Gonzalez completing the top 10 overall all at 15 seconds Aito Gonzalez we understand however didn't get back to that group has lost time today here is the new leader of the tour it stays of course with Onse they could have permed one from seven riders equal on time at the start of the day. But in fact, this man was the best placed of the team. He crossed the line in fifth place. So Jacqueline Rodriguez now leads this race both on points and more significantly on the Golden Jersey competition. And as we look out across the northern coastline here of Spain, the rain has found the race again today, raining since the off this morning, but hopefully it'll be a little bit drier by the time the riders get to Santander. Let's have a look very briefly where we go. It's a 96-mile stage today, 154 kilometres. 
uh, coming away from the hills of the Asturias as we now head in towards Santander. 35th time we'll have finished at this port on the northern coast of Spain. After the 17th kilometre today, we lost one rider uh, from the Seiko team. There's the situation. We've got 194 left of the 198 who started out on Saturday. Gavazzi is the last rider to abandon, or the first rider of the day for Seiko. And moments ago, we also lost uh, David Plaza from Team Bianchi. We've had pictures of him, in fact, uh, sitting in the team car, holding his face. He has a very, very severe toothache, and uh, although he struggled in to finish yesterday and was in last position, he's gone today as the pain has continued. Well, there you can see there's a big lead out now by the US Postal Service. There is Eric Zabel there in about seventh position, right on the wheel of Alessandro Pataki. Acceleration now coming from Bianchi, but it's complete chaos. Team, lead, team men, men are looking round there to see where their leaders are for the moment because everybody wants to make sure as they come into the final three kilometres right now that their team leaders are not going to get caught out by a split towards the end. Well, if Team Bianchi coming up, I would suspect that is for uh, Fabrizio Guidi. He's always ridden well in this race in the past. But now it looks like Uscatel is giving it one last go here. They don't have any great sprinters, but they're going to try and do something. Pull back there by Sergei Ivanov in second position in the white jersey of Fasa Bortolo. He's working for his team leader right now, Alessandro Pataki. It's still all very much together. Everybody is grappling for position, trying to stay at the front end. They don't want to put their noses into the wind too early. And in fact, the Uscatel Uscadi rider is still holding an advantage of three or four bike lengths, but he's going to get swept up pretty soon. Oh, just look how wet that road is now. This is one Fuentes of Seiko now has got to the front over Sergei Ivanov, but they've got that train together and they've organised it better than I would have suspected. It looked to me as though Pataki was backing out of this about four kilometres ago, but he's got the train up there now at two kilometres to the finish, 2,000 metres. Alessandro Pataki is now putting himself in a position to win a stage of his third Grand Tour of the year. Only two other riders in the world have ever done that and not since 1958. He has a real chance, but bet your life Eric Zabel will know that and I'm sure he's locked on his wheel he's absolutely locked on the wheel of Alessandro Pataki who's got three or four teammates around him right now but I tell you what look at that there's a crash yeah. half a dozen riders gone off the road straight in that corner well that was to be expected on that sweeping bend it looks like it is Verada or possibly not but it's certainly a Lamprey rider down remounted there's more riders in the bales down below our camera we can't go down to find out so let's research the front of the bunch and they're not inside the last kilometre either they'll so those time. riders are going to lose time and in fact the yellow jersey went down there so that would be one of the riders from Onse as well the confusion is not going to perturb the sprinters at the front end of the main field and look at that a complete change in color right now all white and blue jerseys Fasa Bortolo are right up there I think Jans Verada is still there as well because there's a Lamprey so. rider in about 10th place at one kilometer to go that looks like Zverada just going under the red banner there about 12 men down the line because that crash happened much further back where the sprinters would not have been It'll be interesting to know if that was an Onse rider that went down. It could have been a Vina Calderola rider. They're similar colours. Angle Edo is the rider just at the bottom of our picture. Zabel has got himself up there too. But it's all Fasa Bortolo trying to work this one out as they lead. Now there's Zabel trying to jump on. As Pataki goes through second, Zabel is looking for that wheel. He's got third. It's going to be between Zabel and Alessandro Pataki. Here's the lineup. Angel Edo is the rider in the green jersey trying to get in. He's waiting. He's got a little bit of respite as they come into the home straight straight now as Fasa Bortolo and Domina Vacanzi might have Lombardi in on the picture here. Now that looks like the style of Lombardi. It is, has gone through in second place as they come off that very tight bend. We need to get back to the front to see if Lombardi's got through. Pataki looking around, Lombardi trying to break through on the left of the picture here. Julian Dean goes now. Dean on the inside to the left of our picture. Pataki going for it as they come to the line. He's got it. Alessandro Pataki takes it on the line and it looks to me as though Julian Dean would not have been too far away from it. And talk about the race of the falling leaves look at them down the home straight Tom Boonen did look as though he was in the picture possibly second or third to the right of our picture uh, but Alessandro Pataki took many risks and held his position well no doubt who the winner was we've seen it ten times already this year on the big tours now it's a big tour stage win number 11 for Alessandro Pataki clear second place on this angle uh, for Zabel Tom Boonen nearest camera they're saying made it are you sure Yes, yes, Bonham will get third for that. But there we are uh, at the moment is Rodriguez, who is still the leader. Second day in the golden jersey for him. Zero time for the first four riders on the overall classification.
This is Santander. Today it's still a little bit stormy here, but the riders now heading on the road to Burgos where they're hoping that the weather will be a little bit kinder to them than it was at the stage finish yesterday. Paul, bad news overnight. Cadell Evans out with yet another broken collarbone. Very sad news for Cadell Evans. It's the third time this season that he's broken his collarbone and it's first season with Team Telecom where mm. they were hoping he was going to be as good as he was last year in the Giro d'Italia. But I think for Cadell, the year's over. All right, well, let's have a look at the map for the route today because I shouldn't think it'll be a sprinter's delight, but you never know. We do have one climb, though, right in the middle. Sadly, it's before our pictures have come to air, so we can't show you that climb. The ride is going from Santander down to Burgos. Once over the first category climb, there's a third category climb to follow, and then the run down to the finish. Massive tailwind. He's probably covering these kilometres about a minute and two seconds just now. Uh, with this tailwind, but he's got one kilometre to go. It's two and a half years, more or less, give or take a month or so, since Unai Echebria won a professional race. He's now looking for a big result here, and uh, and I think he's richly deserved. He took the gamble a long way out, a little bit further than I imagined. There was a time when they pulled them back to one minute. The peloton seemed to be coming back into play. All of a sudden, nobody would do any work. Teammates of the breakaways got to the front, uh, caused problems with the chase, and here's the result. When you've got two team riders in the league group, Bob, your team manager gets very upset if you don't win the day. Yes, absolutely. The, uh, they would be very upset if they missed out on this really good opportunity to win a stage. You could tell you, Skatey, one of the smaller Spanish teams, but the most aggressive, the most competitive, and they're going to get a big payoff here by Unai Echeverria winning a stage of the Tour of Spain, the home tour, and so very important to all these Spanish teams on a sponsorship level. This will be a fantastic result for the Euskatel Skatey team. Now with 13 minutes to let make up, he's not going to take on the race lead here, but he's not going to even give that a second thought. Unai Echeverria of Venezuela, and almost certainly the first ever cyclist from his country to win a stage of the Tour of Spain, is coming down the home straight with all the time in the world now. Zip up the jersey, two-handed salute, three and a half hours, the stage today, and the clock starts now. It won't count uh, up towards 13 minutes, though, so he can just bask in the sunshine of... Oh, dear me, steady on. We've had one crash today, uh, caused out uh, by, on the road by a motorcycle, and Fabian Yecker falling there. He's on the road. We, let's hope he starts tomorrow. This will be the sprint now for second place. Now Gutierrez can pack a punch here, but he sat at the back, and uh, Echebria looking now to make it a 1-2 for Uscatel Uscardi. He certainly is holding on there and looking to make the move around. I think it's Cardenas who is leading it out for the finish. Oh, no, it's uh, is, is Idra Nozal. Nozal is the new leader of the tour. That is not in dispute. But here come, comes the pocket dynamo, David Echebaria, who gets a 1-2 for Uscadel Uscardi on the line. Fabulous result, well worked, great tactics. And uh, I think third place there went um, also to... Um, I'm not sure who it went to, but it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Nozal was right there for fourth, I think, Nozal got. And that would give him the lead. Now there's a big haul for the line. Now we might see a difference in the results here because Zarbel again mixing with about eight or nine men down. And I don't think we're going to see Pataki bother with this one. It doesn't look as though he's going to take place in the bunch sprint. I hope we get to see the front here. Is he right? Oh, there they are. As we come up towards the line now, we've got uh, the Fuen Lubrada team there trying to get in on the mix. But on the far right, uh, Benoit Joachim is having a little dig. And Edo is coming through on the inside. But through the middle comes Eric Zabel. And the champion of Germany makes it look easy. He'll just kick himself now. It wasn't for first place. The two Echebrias on the top, they're not brothers, of course. They come from different countries. They share the same surname. Echebria finishing off the sprint for Unai with 44 seconds deficit there for David. A Cardenas, another good sprinter, got third. Gutierrez van Gulen. In sixth place is the next man in the golden jersey, Isidro Nozal, last of the group. David Echebria has come up now into second place at 50 seconds. Same time as Jacqueline at Rodriguez, who was the leader for a couple of days. He holds third. Igor Gonzalez de Galdiano and Marcus Serrano. So the only real change here, apart from the leader, is the new name of Echebria in second. Further down, Beltran stays there in the best of the rest, as it were, for US Postal, Heras. These two go down just one place because of the arrival of David uh, Echebaria. Osa is there, Aito, Unai drops behind at Mancebo. That completes the top ten. Uh, Oscar Sevilla at a minute 35 now, but still holding a good position. He was 45 at the start of the day. 
and uh, Ito Gonzalez, the defending champion, 334. Levi Leipheimer just lost another little bit of time on the run in today. He's now almost 21 minutes behind. Uh, which uh, means that Levi now is going to have to change his thinking on this event and use it to get some great legs for next season. There's the new leader. In fact, uh, Rodriguez had hoped he got the lead yesterday because he's a local man where we finished yesterday at Santander. But the good luck for him has come one day later. And the man in yellow, for well, the golden jersey rather now, is Nozal. And as we move away from the northern coastline of Spain, the weather is getting a little bit better and the riders will certainly welcome that. The stage today, 166.7 kilometres. That's a little over 105 miles and the riders now in full flight. As the riders now make their way, they came into Soraya by motor vehicle, but they leave it, of course, in the saddle. And on the way now, Zaragoza, a town of or city rather, we're visiting for the 43rd time. It's the third most popular stop-off city on the Welter route since uh, it started. This is a great run-in. It's not dangerous at all for the sprinters this afternoon, but they've just got to keep their teammates on the front. The idea of a lead-out is to keep the pace as high as possible and stop the confusion of lesser riders moving to the front and all of a sudden feeling that they've got a chance in the sprint, as we saw on the opening stage of the Tour de France. I think a loss to the Tour de France this year was the, the absence of Mario Cipollini's team when it came down to the sprints because they would lie the race out for the last 20 or 30 kilometers but right now there are two teams on the front keeping the pace nice and high and that, this shot here gives you an idea just how fast everybody's going and swooping into that adverse camber then i thought little david Etchberia sitting at the wrong end of the pellet on there for the moment at least that long line as they start to come up this slight incline after the descent stretches them right out again it's a difficult job to keep control at the front. Now they're saying the distance to go is 1.6 kilometres. I can't believe that is right. Well, it could be. They are flying along at the moment. They could be knocking off the kilometres. We haven't seen a single kilometers. banner today, have we? Well, I think the roads are too wide to get the banners across the road. There was a barrier, a banner, just a few moments ago strapped to a bridge. And I think the fact is we must remember these guys are clocking off kilometres at around about 60 seconds ago right now. Yes, even inside that at times, uh, coming in at plus uh, 65 kilometres an hour, so the they really are coming in very, very quickly. There will be a few little hiccups as they approach the line, and that, that might disrupt the absolute speed of the FASA Bortolo rise, but it looks like the, the FASA team now have just about hit the front. Well, as we're entering the barrier straight, the, our mileage is absolutely correct. They have just galloped into town at a tremendous speed, and oh, there's been a crash here. Now, we saw the riders ricochet there. That is a nasty crash, and it looks here as though the Lamprey rider, and it looks like Alessandro Cortinovis has hit the barrier there with the side of his face. I hope he's OK, but he's taking a nasty blow as we go under. I think that might be the kilometre to go, that red sign on the right of the road. We're feeling our way into the finish here because uh, they are saying one kilometre to the finish. And look at this, that crash has disrupted the finish here. Looks like it's Pataki up there in second place. It's definitely two Fasa Bortolo riders, and there's a big gap in the main field. I think the Lamprey rider trying to come across there in fourth position on the road is bound to be Jans Varada, but the man at the back end of the race is in serious difficulties. It is Pataki. And Angle Edo has got his back wheel and is going to try and take him on the line. Well, this is a very, very easy victory for Alessandro Pataki because nobody, as they couldn't with Cipollini, will get by him. As Julian Dean gets third place there on the line, Zabo was probably sixth though we'll wait for the photo on that uh, but that was in the end a very easy victory for Pataki disrupted and so too was all of our concentration by the accident once again on the running we didn't see the impact but our cameras picked up the fact that the Lamprey rider was down this was a brilliant lead out by the Fossa Bortolo team they peeled off their last man Guido Trentin with about 200 meters to go and then it was just an absolute drag race to the finish by this man and the counting begins right now just a few meters off to the finish. <laughs> It is true, in fact, uh, Pataki himself in his press conference apparently the other day said he's won 20 races. Well, we've got 22 down for him uh, of victories, so he can't even keep up with his own number of victories right now. And then, of course, some people don't count the smaller races which don't have World Cup points. Uh, but we've got him down for win number 23 today. And yes, it's as we thought, all of the men that mattered finished in that main pack. Uh, Nozal, 50 seconds still, all intact, over Yaquin Rodriguez, who, because of his finishes in second place, Galdiano third, Echeverria is in fourth, and Marcus Serrano completes the top five there for the Onse Orozco team. 
So the time trial, don't forget, is tomorrow. And these, we think, are the riders to watch. Igor Gonzalez de Galdiano, Aitor Gonzalez, the defending champion of the tour, Dario Frigo, David Miller, but we won't see much of him. He's so far behind overall. And Angel Casero, their riders. And don't forget, Roberto Jerez cannot afford to lose time tomorrow. It's a big effort for him. Now back down to the podium. There he is. They've dragged him out very quickly today. And uh, Isidro Nozal continues to lead the race. Onse, the only team so far to provide us with the race leader. And they've used three of the riders since they won that team time trial. And it's a beautiful day in Zaragoza for the time trial, a city which is no stranger indeed for the race situation. Let's have a little look at the overall standings here before we get to all of the action in the time trial. Isidro Nozal here at 50 seconds. David Echeverria, that's the way it's been for a couple of days now. Joachim Rodriguez, 50 seconds. Igor Gonzaldiano, he's a man who can ride a good time trial. He's yet to start, of course, today, 50 seconds. And Marcus Serrano in the Anse squad completing there the top five. Further down, in comes US Postal, second in that time trial almost a week ago now, with Beltran Heras still up there in sixth and seventh. Oza, eighth and ninth, uh, eight or in Unai, that is. And Francisco Mantebo, another Ibanesto.com rider in tenth. A look at the notables, Oscar Sevilla fighting back to fitness. He's had a crash in this race, but he's still holding 14th. And of the two previous winners, Angel Casero, 39th, and Aito Gonzalez, both very good time trialists. And we'll look for a result today to move them up a little higher, I think, as we go into the Pyrenees tomorrow on our journey into France. Well, we had a little bit of a shunt in the finishing sprint yesterday, and sadly, the lead-out man for Jan Zarada here, Alessandro Cortinovis, came off the worst. A broken jaw and a fractured t a cheekbone and a collarbone has left him in hospital and a non-starter today. And we can only wish him well, because that really is a sad way uh, to leave the Tour of Spain. Well, it is, as I say, a beautiful day in the city today. Perfect day for a time trial. We remind ourselves of the route first. As we now stay in the city, we came in uh, from the north uh, west side. We now race right around Zaragoza today. And uh, perfect conditions. There's no challenge as far as the roads are concerned, but just look at this, 72 degrees at the moment. A nice humidity at 53%, lovely blue skies, everything looks royal out there, and a pretty strong wind blowing at 24 miles an hour coming in from uh, that northwest corner. Well, I can tell you that uh, Miller has finished, we're watching his ride very early on, 18th man to start at the field of 188. He's sitting down waiting to see if anybody can match the time, and he's already told us, in fact, that this was one of the hardest time trials he has ever ridden. So he really did put his weight behind it. When he came to the line, 54-54, and that is still the best time. As we look at the standings so far, Alex Zula finished soon after him. He's at a minute 41. Bobby Julik still in third place. Vitaliati was an early leader. And Torsten Eichmann of the Telecom team. That's the top five overall. But look at those big time gaps. Levi Leipai, for example, has lost many minutes to David Miller, which he won't be too concerned with, of course. Uh, but I think he's destined to lose a lot of time again today. Last year's winner really put a big effort in here. And is being rewarded with a very, very good time indeed. It's not the winning time, but that is not important at this stage of the tour. Third, he's holding at the moment, Aito Gonzalez. He is not going to get the better of either Miller or Huska. And he wants to get inside 55-31 to beat Grabsch. So David Miller survived a big name there. But uh, there we are, Aito Gonzalez in with 55-15. Here is Igor Gonzalez de Galeano in the start line. He's the favorite to take the yellow jersey now. And if he can do some solid rides in the mountain, we're going to have a real fight all the way to Madrid between him and the other climbing contenders. Well, he lies fourth overall at 50 seconds, uh, Igor Gonzalez de Galeano, but carries the pressure, really, of winning this race for Anse, the last time this team will race in a major grand tour because it's the end of the line for the sponsorship this season. Rather sadly, it's been a wonderful sponsor within cycling. And so Gonzalez de Galeano is now underway and he's got the qualifications to win this race. Frigo is arriving here and this will put him in sixth place finish if he can hang on. And he can, 55-55. There's the 10 kilometer and now that is a surprise. 28 seconds quicker. Well, 
That's amazing. That's amazing. But don't forget, we did mention last year, this man was the time trial champion of Spain and is a 28-second beating of David Miller at this part of the course. He doesn't look comfortable at all, but let's not forget this man has rivaled people like Lance Armstrong at the Tour de France, and he wore, of course, the yellow jersey for a long time last year. And I think right now he's trying to... Uh, build himself a nice buffer before we go into the mountains. We're absolutely stunned by this. Nozal has gone through responding to the race leadership of the Vuelta España with the best time. He's never looked as though he's been doing that sort of a ride, uh, but he, the clock says he is. Well, so Roberto Herasi slipped behind the time of arch rival Anil Casero and also Alex Zula is recording a better time. There's Michael Barry at 30.19 and I think that's going to be quicker too than Roberto, his teammate just as they hit about the same time, 30.19.3. So they've gone through pretty much the same, Barry and Heras. So Heras uh, not providing uh, any better or any worse than I think we expected of this young man. He climbs really well, though. This is the man we're interested in, though, the golden jersey of the Vuelta España heading for the time check at 21 kilometres. Rodriguez has gone through, by the way, and he is wallowing in the top 90 riders, starting the day in third place overall. So he's going to be washed away from the leaderboard tonight. He held the lead for two days. Well, he's still showing a very fine position on his machine, right? On the centre of the handlebars. And you know what? He's gone through that 21-kilometre check with a time 45 seconds better than David Miller and a time a minute faster than his own teammate, Igor Gonzalez de Galeano. You know, they always say that the leader's jersey changes a man. Well, it's certainly done that this afternoon. Well, it reminds me of what Sean Kelly once said to me. I might have told you before, but Sean rode the best, best time trials of his life when he was a leader of the tour. He was not interested in doing a good time trial if he wasn't racing for a high place in the classification. Well, Zeras comes up here. It's not going to be a long wait before Beltran is also in that straight. And in fact, they're turning the motorbike off behind. He might be right behind him. Uh, because and he is so Beltran has almost bridged a two-minute gap here to Roberto Heras which is going to give him a solid position in the overall the two US postal riders both Spaniards and this has been a, an exceptional ride by Manuel Beltran it'll be overshadowed by the race leader when he comes in but you know this man might become the protected rider now on US postal it all depends what happens tomorrow uh, when we go to the Pyrenees 55 16 then and the fourth best time for Beltran as Gonzalez de Galeano comes in, Miller is best time 54-54. Uh, Gonzalez de Galeano, has he sprinted the gap closed over those last 10 kilometres? We were talking about 15 seconds difference. I don't think he'll get to the finish in time to pit Miller, but it will be very, very close. But whatever happened after that fast start in the second sector, he lost time and recovered from it. Desperate sprint, it'll go into second place, I think, here for Igor Gonzalez de Galdiano. He's going to have to push Rushka as we come up to Rushka's time now. He'll drop into third place and that will be good enough, I think. He'll just stay ahead of Aitor Gonzalez, who actually has done a very, very good time here as he's turning out now and is putting back in the frame as we go into the mountains. 55-11 third place i can tell you that time 55 11 would have won the 40 kilometer british time trial championship in 1965. just a quick look in the car there the passenger riding alongside manolo Sainz was yoshiba Belocchi, and that's quite remarkable he crashed out of the tour de france with that dramatic crash when he was uh, going into a corner being chased by lance armstrong but this is the story of the tour, tour of spain this afternoon it's been a ride of his young life this and he's going to come in with about a 53 30 performance which will give him victory on the day on the second win of his career and he will increase his lead in the vuelta espana you cannot have asked more from this rider on the day when we thought he would see his jersey pass away to a teammate he has kept it with a vengeance 53 34 he wins by a minute and 20 seconds that grimace is very shortly going to be one huge smile fabulous performance by nozal there's the official result of that a minute 20 back to the ace time trialist david miller but the two big names, uh, Gonzalez de Galdiano at 137, last year's champion, uh, Gonzalez at 141. Uh, they have performed very well, really, because they should stay the course as we head around the circuit towards Madrid. Still a couple of weeks and a few days away. 2.27, hats off to the boys. That's the official time gap now. 2.42 to Beltran, who has done the ride of his life, too, in many ways. And Heras 
Good place, Bob. Fifth overall, although the gaps are opening at 4.35. He started the day sixth overall, moved up one place. That is a solid ride by Roberto Arias, who we've seen light up the field when they're on the very steepest climbs. We have five mountaintop finishes to come in the big mountains and one climbing time trial before the end. So this bike race is not over by any stretch of the imagination. So he gets his third golden jersey, and this time... He might feel safe for a day or two because he has a lead of 2 minutes and 27 seconds. He salutes the crowd and he won't have time to think of where we are going tomorrow because we are heading up into the Pyrenees. Let's have a look first of all. Uh, to the route, we say goodbye to Huesca today, heading due north to the French borders in the centre of the Pyrenees, over the top of the mountains, into France and up to Coteray with the uphill finish, of course, taking us up to 1,360 metres. Now, Coteray not the only climb on this stage of 190, the longest stage of the race. Montrepo, second category. The Portelay is the gateway to France. The giant Col d'Obisque, a very famous mountain in its own right and finishing on Coteray Combasque at the end of what will be a very, very tough day cycling indeed. And the riders are now on French soil. In fact, when we join the action, they'll be on the Col d'Obisque, but this happened about 45 minutes ago. The leaders, nine of them clear of the field, including Levi Leipheimer, uh, all following Johan Horash over the top of the Alto de Portelay, bringing them into France, snatching the daily newspapers there, uh, just to push up their jerseys for the very long and very rapid descent down into French soil. Just caught a sight there of the French side. Now, let me first of all update you straight away on the number of riders left in the race. Yes, we had 188 on the start line, but we now only have 183 and 12 of the 22 teams intact. But take a note of rider 158 there. Frank Vandenbrucker abandoned about 10 minutes ago. We didn't expect that because Frank, we thought, was going to do well in this race, distinguish himself somewhere along the way and go on for a successful attack at the world title in Canada. And he may be rethinking the situation right now. This very select group that was about 25 strong is thinning out rather rapidly now on the climb up to the finish. There's been an attack by Roberto Heras. He has gone back into the peloton, but you will notice the golden jersey has disappeared from the group. Well, is Idner Ozal had put an awful lot of effort into this bike race here this afternoon, and I think he was a sacrificial lamb for Igor Gonzalez de Galdiano. Igor Gonzalez de Galdiano is just in about third position there. Looked like Aitor Gonzalez was going off the back of the group as well. Felix Cardenas, I think, has got fire ants in his legs because he is attacking at every possible opportunity. I'm just seeing here if we can catch a glimpse of the golden jersey, but it seems now that he has completely unhooked from the back of that group and he's now in real danger of losing his lead, uh, even if he goes only to his teammate, uh, Gonzalez de Galdiano, who's still in that group down there, but more importantly, Beltran is still ahead with Luis Perez, and he's looking now to try and get the time gap that will give him the race lead, because remember, there are no time bonuses in the Tour of Spain. Well, if Isidro Nozal gets completely blown away here this afternoon, all Beltran has to do is finish 15 seconds ahead of Igor Gonzalez de Galdiano to try and get himself that lead. Here is the golden jersey right now, and uh, you can see, I think, Bob Bias peddling action that uh, the lights have gone out. Very labored motion here now. He has to conserve two and a half minutes to Gonzalez de Galdiano and a few more, or a few less than that, excuse me, to um, uh, Manuel Beltran. Beltran. Uh, I don't think he's going to do I it. If he does it. do it, his, his days are numbered in the golden jersey as race leader. But Igor Gonzalez de Galeano has now come forward. He's going to try to conserve the jersey for the team. He does need to close some time up to Manuel Beltran or the U.S. Postal T team rider will get the uh, golden jersey. This is a very exciting bike race. You can see by his face, he's ridden a fantastic Tour of Spain. And maybe now his quotes uh, about going at a snail's pace are going to, uh, to come true. But he has done a great Tour of Spain. He did an incredible ride for Igor Gonzalez de Galeano. Here's a Benesto rider attacking at the front there just off the front of the Roberto Eras and De Galdiano group. Well, I honestly feel that Nozal there has ridden a real race leader's tour today. He didn't ride it for himself, quite clearly. He was riding for Gonzalez De Galdiano. He is up there. We've got just three kilometers to go to the finish now. And the battle is on. The field are slowly winding everybody in except Rasmussen. 
Well, there's the group there with Roberto Heras and Nigo Gonzalez de Galeana. They're pulling themselves up here to Aito Osa, who was actually in the leading group just a few moments ago. He's about to get picked up by this group. And looking there, you can see the blue jersey of Vigo Gonzalez de Galeano. He probably expects this afternoon that he's going to write himself uh, in the record books as the new leader of this bike race. In fact, there's been a change there because that was Unai Osa going off the front of the group. So Unai going away, there's 10 in the group down there. This is Oscar Sevilla and he's coming up. He's, he's been joined by Perez, but is that, uh, is that uh, the leader up there, Rasmussen, or is it Osa we've lost track of? I think it's Rasmussen, isn't it? Well, I think, in fact, Rasmussen is just a little bit further up the front here. We've be. got to get uh, Sevilla across it. to the group of uh, Manuel Beltran because the, be the situation at the moment is one lone leader. The lone leader is Michael Rasmussen. Two chasers, the two chasers are, of course, Beltran and Luis Perez, and uh, we can see a lot more riders being put into difficulty here right now. That group there just about to take the hairpin is the group of Igor Gonzalez de Gadliano and Roberto Heras. We are at the steepest part of the climb here right now, just going inside of three kilometres to go, and we're kicking up still at around about an average gradient of 10%. Well, this is a real horrible climb now because the riders have raced so hard. Every attack looked like being the last one, but they fought the way back. Vladimiro Belli on the frontier, Gonzalez de Galeano, and right behind him, Roberto Heras. Frigo is there as well. This is a very select group of some nine riders, but there's still a chance of a change, and it might go the way of Beltran. Well, Roberto Harris tried everything today to get away from the main field on the slopes of the Col de Lobisque, and he keeps looking over his shoulder. He's probably still feeling a little bit itchy. He wants to try and put some time between himself and Igor Gonzalez de Galdiano. And a little bit further back, we can see one or two riders in serious difficulty here That's right now. Second, I think. They really are starting to split the race. This is the group just behind the group of the leader of the bike race, uh, I think by the end of tonight, Igor Gonzalez de Galdiano. Well, there are some tired legs now on this climb. It is a very irregular race right now. Everybody throwing in their 10 penny worth, and all of a sudden they are being rejected. Eco Flores is there. Uh, Alberto um, Gonzalez. There is Aitor Gonzalez here setting the pace. He's had his moments today, but it hasn't really worked out, and now it looks as though he's paying the price as he's drifting away from the front of the action. And this rider, content with just looking after his own pace, and it's up to them to catch him if they can. And they're slowly but surely, he can tick off the kilometres. So he's coming under the banner, indicating two kilometres to go right now, and uh, his pedalling action is nice and fluid. It doesn't look like a man who's beginning to weaken at all as we go back and have a check to see just exactly who is in this group here. Just at the back there is Leonardo Pipoli. In front of him in the white jersey, Dario Frigo, a bit further forward, uh, Roberto Harris. He must be a little bit frustrated, I think, Bob, by the fact that he put in a fine attack here this afternoon. He thought he'd blown the race to pieces, but Igor Gonzalez de Galdiano, like a true leader of a team, never actually panicked. He allowed the attack to form and used his team to pull himself back into contention. De Galdiano is doing a fabulous ride right now. I don't think we've seen Manuel Beltran come back, and I think that's what Roberto Eras is doing right now, playing the team game. He doesn't want to attack if he cannot get away from Di Galdiano, because if, if uh, Beltran has 15 seconds or more, he will get the jersey from Igor Gonzalez de Galdiano, who now is going to have to start making a tempo as hard of a tempo as he's capable of and try to close the gap down to Beltran. This is the second group on the road at 55 seconds. That's the group which contains Manuel Beltran and Luis Perez. They've been joined by a third rider as well in that group. So they are uh, still not really making inroads at all into the advantage of the man who leads this bike race, Michael Rasmussen. The next lone rider you can see a bit further down there is Oscar Sevilla, and then the group containing the majority of the contenders. But what's going to be important at the finish line right now this afternoon is the time that is being lost by Isidro Nozel. And whether he will lose all of his conserved 227 to his teammate Igor Gonzalez de Galdiano. And I've got a feeling he's already lost it down there, you know, because he looked as though he was slowing right down at the moment. Well, in fact, if, if the race were finished as it was right now, we do see a big loss by Isidro Nozal. The man who will be the leader at the end of the day is Manuel Beltran, because there was about 28 seconds between Igor Gonzalez de Galdiano's group and Manuel Beltran on the road. But the race is still one and a half kilometers away from the summit. 
What I mean, a fantastic ride by Michael Rasmussen. You can see there's hardly any fatigue, it seems, in his legs at this moment. He only has about a kilometer to go. He'll get the red flag in a moment. It's a flatter part. There it is. You can just see it in the distance. He can see that, too. He knows he has a minute to conserve. Michael Rasmussen is doing a fabulous ride right now, and he is going flat out to the finish line. What a great ride by this Danish ex-mountain bike racer. Great to see Michael Rasmussen, a man I used to race against in the dirt, having a fabulous day out on the roads. We're in France, but it is the Tour of Spain. A great stage win for Rasmussen and the flagging fortunes of the Rabobank team. Well, in fairness, you know, he started out life as a road racing cyclist, uh, Michael Rasmussen, because he came in with a third place in the World Junior Championships in 92 and followed that up a year later with a fourth place in the World Under-23 Championships. Then he went over to mountain biking. I remember, in fact, he finished fourth in the old mountain bike four-day race, the Tour of Hawaii when he won two stages of that back in 1997 and I was on the island at the time and probably the last time I spoke to him come to think of it and now he's here back to the road and there's only won one race since he made his comeback uh, to the road and that was uh, a stage of the Tour of Burgos last year this is the second group on the road we're looking at right now. They're still hovering around about one minute behind Michael Rasmussen. Felix Cardenas is in the group with Manuel Beltran, and they're the big figure of Luis Perez. These men right now are changing the overall classification because if Manuel Beltran can finish 15 seconds ahead of Igor Gonzalez de Galdiano, then he will be the new leader of the bike race at the end of today because I have a feeling, Bob, that uh, Isidro Nozal is going to lose himself a lot more than the two and a half minutes he had at the start of the day. But look at this. Well, that's a ripper from Unai Osa. He finally has just scorched away. We've swung very rightly up to the finishing line, though, to welcome the Danish rider. Then the clocks will start when Beltran crosses the line to see if he's got the next golden jersey of this race and the first time it will have passed to a team other than Onsay. But this rider, Michael Rasmussen, must feel, he doesn't look it, but he must feel fantastic inside. This has been an outstanding, well-taken victory what a strong display this has been with the uh, Spanish police operating on French soil here now as he comes up towards the line. A good chance to look over his shoulders. It's a victory and a nice wave to the crowd. And this is a serious road race win now for Michael Rasmussen. 29 years of age. Remarkable to see these mountain bikers switching across to the road, and that was certainly a brave move by him. We would have expected Aito Osa to be the favourite in the two-man breakaway, but this man has showed us that mountain bikers Bob can ride the road very well. This is important right now. Manuel Beltran is chasing there after Cardenas. Cardenas is second on the road. It's important for him to get as much time as possible. Cardenas is going to get the second place for him and a lot of King of the Mountains points, but the clock is important for the man in second place in the blue jersey, Tricky Beltran. Well, look at the desperation and the grimace on Beltran's face. He knows he needs 15 seconds from uh, De Galliano, as well as two minutes, 30 seconds plus. He is giving it everything. You can see it on his face to uh, Isidro Mazzotti. Erstwhile leader at the moment. I think we'll see Nazar coming very far down the road, but it's going to be close between both of those riders to see whether or not the US Postal Man will get the jersey. Here comes Cardenas for second place. Great ride by Cardenas and huge mountain points, but look at Beltran sprinting all the way to the line. We're going to stop the clock at about 59 seconds for him and now start counting it down to De Galliano and Isidro Nozal. So Beltran at 59 seconds on the clock. Perez comes in now. Now the clock will really start. 15 seconds, that's gone by. As now Frigo comes up towards the line as well. We're looking for the gold jersey. And we're looking for a time of 2.27. Frigo is in. As the riders clear the ride, this is the end of this big group now. And the golden jersey not yet in sight, and he won't be. Because this is, there's Harass coming in on the left of our picture. And here comes Gonzalez de Galdiano, so he is not going to be the leader. Beltran is still in the golden jersey. But 2.27, 3.26 is what we're looking for on the clock at the moment. 3.25, 3.26 is what we need to see when we come up to the line for the golden jersey of Isidro Nozel. There's Vladimir Belli, Leonardo Pipoli coming in right now. And a little bit further down, that will be Inigo Cuesta. But right now, what we're doing is looking at the clock. It's two minutes since the leader crossed the finishing line. And uh, Flores coming up towards the line right now, but everybody is looking for the golden jersey, which is on the shoulders right now of Isidro Nozel. It's more than likely, I would say, Phil, going to swap across to Manuel Beltran tonight. 
3.25, 3.26, that's what the clock must say. There's no time bonuses in the Vuelta, and it's all down to real time. And these riders now are looking for a new leader of the Tour. We've had three already. There's Sevilla come in at 2.30, and he might do it. Here he comes, fighting his way home, and he deserves to do it. He's ridden a wonderful race today. I think he's going to make it, you know. He's still inside one minute to the line. He's easily going to keep his jersey. Welcome to the podium, Isidro, because he's still in that golden jersey. Well, I don't think we would have expected that, Phil. Look at the face on this man. He has been to the edge of purgatory and come back, and he's kept himself in the lead. I don't think he will believe that at all. But it's one more day in the golden jersey for that man, Isidro Nozel. So, the stage, though, won by the ex-mountain biker, Michael Rasmussen. 54 seconds ahead of Felix Cardenas. 58 in front of Manuel Beltran, who almost got the race lead. A minute 10 over Luis Perez, who attacked on all of the climbs today and Aitor Oza did well to salvage fifth place out of the day he came in also at a minute and 10 seconds the mountain biker 29 years of age Michael Rasmussen his second ever road racing win and his best by far here a stage for him now and not just a stage in the Tour of Spain but one of the prestigious mountain stages Yes, eight riders gave up in the Tour of Spain yesterday on the way into the Pyrenees and France. Today they make the return journey back across those mountains as we go from France back into Spain. And it's going to be a very tough day indeed. Well, first of all, let's have a look at the overall situation. It changed a bit yesterday. Isidro Nozal, though, didn't change. He's still on top of the leaderboard. Beltran coming up into second place. Igor Gonzalez de Galeano, always up amongst the front runners. He was the leader on this day a week ago. He's in third. Dario Frigo coming into the frame now at three minutes. And Roberto Heras, best placed of the US Postal Berry Floor team at three minutes, 18 seconds. Now, the man who's uh, stunning everybody ever since that wonderful time trial a couple of days ago, Paul, is Zidro Nozal. Absolutely fantastic performance yesterday, and uh, I suppose we should have realized that this young man, who's almost 26 years of age, was uh, bound to do something as we got into the big mountains, because after all, he came to our attention last year in 2002 when he was the white jersey leader as best young rider at the Tour de France. He's been a professional since 1999, but I think, Phil, yesterday he really became a serious man. To hold on to that was incredible. So Nozal is the leader. Who is going to take him on, Bob? It looks as though there's a two-pronged attack possible from U.S. Postal. They have two riders in the top five. This man, Roberto Eras, Lance Armstrong's number one lieutenant in the mountains of the Tour de France and perhaps the most gifted climber of the current generation. Roberto Eras, fabulous climber, has yet to really scintillate in the climbs of the Vuelta, but it's coming soon, I think, the attack from Eras. So Beltran and Harass promising this morning at the sign-in that they would attack again today. As now we can see what is going to happen as these riders will continue. I really think that Beltran is turning out to be possibly the man to beat. He's certainly riding very, very well yesterday. All right, well, we've seen the top five. Let's have a look a little bit further down. Francisco Mancebo staying there in the top ten. So too Aito Gonzalez. Alejandro Valverde almost did enough to get the race lead yesterday. In the end, he's come up from 10th into 8th position. The winner yesterday, Michael Rasmussen, comes in now at 9th. And Unai Osa there completing the top 10. Let's have a look at the American riders in the race. Floyd Landers in his second big tour, riding very strongly in the service of his two Spanish leaders. He's 57th. Hincapi there as well. And Bobby Julie from Team Telecom. The sprinter, Fred Rodriguez. Levi Leipheimer of the 180 men left in the race now. He's 155th and is seeking form for what he hopes will be a good start uh, to next year, the season 2004. 